Hi, 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 and welcome to L and A does audio stuff. Hey, today you will learn every single bit there is to know about Ableton Live's analog. So it's not a copy of just any old synthesizer, but it's actually made so that it combines features of legendary synthesizers so that it becomes one modern instrument. It uses physical modeling synthesis, which means that the waveform is generated using mathematical model. model. So basically a bunch of equations and algorithms to simulate physical source of sound. But hey, before we get into all the details, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you feed every single algorithm on YouTube and you will definitely see all my videos when I post because you want to be here because I have a lot of cool content. Let's get into it. Part one of this video is overview. So let's go here and add an analog from instruments. There we go, beautiful thing. Let's have a look what's it made of. So we have basically a thing called shell. So shell is this gray area here. So all these sections are separated by these little lines and all the sections also have orange on off button. So we have two oscillators, Oscillator one, oscillator two, noise oscillator. I don't know what that is. Filter one, filter two, amplifier one, amp two, LFO one. <laughs> and then we have a global section with the um, volume, vibrato, uh, vibrato, not vibrato, vibrato. <laughs> yeah, unison and glide. Inside of this shell, we have the display and display shows all the options that the section of the shell has to offer. So example, let's take the global area. You can see that there's quick routing options. There's also uh, options of vibrato. vibrato. Yes, that's correct. Keyboard uh, and unison and glide. So all that is to do with vibrato, unison and glide, as well as other routing options for the whole synthesizer. So we're gonna now go each of these shell sections one by one. Okay, so we have three primary sources of sound. We have oscillator one, noise and oscillator two. Let's just take those off. So again, the orange button is on and off button. I'm also gonna take uh, the filter to one away. So let's just leave amplifier one. This means that we have now one oscillator on. So when I press a uh, key, you can hear the sound of this oscillator. So inside of the oscillator, of course, we have the on off button. We also have the output level of the oscillator. We also have the F1, F2, and this means the filter. So this is to do with the routing. So it's the balance of the oscillator's um, output to each filter. So example, now it's connected to fully to F1, which means this filter here. If I put it here to the completely to the left, it will be connected to here. Then we have also the shape. We have sine, sorted, rectangle, and noise. Okay, so if we example take the rectangle from here, we also get a little bit extra controls in our display. So as you can see, when I put sine, the width, bullet pulse width, and the sub modes go away. Okay, I'm gonna talk about those in a minute. Then we have octave, semi, and detune. So these to do with pitch. Are we, what octave are we in? This is the middle C, then we could go octave lower, semitone. So example 12 would be octave lower. And so on, and D2. Especially amazing when you're creating synth sound and you want two oscillators to sound slightly different, detuning and using these controls are very important. Okay, then we have pitch envelope. Um, here, and we have the pitch envelope initial time. So where does it start? Lower. Okay, we also have the time. How long does the pitch take to go from the initial to reach the final level? So example, if we go, let's go a little bit. Lower. 
And then we have also pitch mode. So we have these are modulation options and every single of the screens displays also show the modulation options. So they kind of repeat themselves. So when you get one, you will get them all. So we have pitch modulation. How is the LFO one, which is here, modulating the pitch of this oscillator? So if I turn this LFO one on, and we have a little bit of rate and sine wave there. You can see when we do that, put that on. If I put this key to zero, you can see that I'm pressing all the keys and going up the scale. And they're all just the same note. When I go to 100%, so I double click it and go to the default. Now it goes up the scale the normal way. And when I go to 200, which is the extend that completely to the other end. They go basically go octave higher on each step. Uh, pulse width, I can show it really easily here. So if I go here and go rectangle, and you can see the width of this signal just going ah, da, 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 up and down. Uh, we can make it wider, which makes it sound maybe a bit more bigger and boomier, uh, where if we make it very small, it could sound a little bit more tinier sound. We can modulate the width also with LFO1. We can also add a mode. So example, now we could create a bass sound. Out of this, uh, we turn on a sub oscillator. So basically another sound that is added to the top of this sound, but it goes octave lower. So if we have it on sump and put it on 100%, you know, we can get very nice bass sound, put it octave lower. So that's already very interesting. We can also sync it. It restarts the oscillator waveform according to the additional oscillator. So we can get some really interesting textures using this one. But I'm gonna go for the sub because we create a bass. So now we're gonna create a very, very basic base using the two oscillators. So let's go and activate the oscillator two. Let's go here and add a sine wave. Sine wave has a very like a soft sound. And then we could just take the volume down a little bit on the oscillator one so we can hear the sine wave a little bit better. For the oscillator two, we can add a little bit of pitch envelope. And make the time a little bit shorter. So we get that. We also can detune it a little bit and try maybe sawtooth. Ooh, retro bass. We can also add a noise oscillator here. So it just oscillates noise. And why is that good? Sometimes noise can add a little bit extra harmonics and extra color into uh, a synth sound. We can also use it as a very creative tool to create risers, lifts and stuff. So uh, example, if it's quite loud and we use a filter to noise it in and out. So that's cool. But also if we just put it a little bit lower in uh, in the volume and then we also select the color of the frequencies we can just add that kind of color the warmth on the top of the uh, synth sound okay so now we obviously need to filter these let's go through what's in the filter so we have filter one example here here we have first the filter band mode demonstrate here. So these are the different bands. This is a high pass, that's a low pass. So we also have the option in them, the 12 or 24. So this one will cut 48 and this one will 12. So what do we have? We have 24 of 12. So you can see what that means here. So you can relate it to these numbers. So this is really interesting. So you have this two filter two percentage. So you can see that under filter two, there is a follow option. But if this is on, it means that the filter two's uh, cutoff frequency will follow the filter one's cutoff frequency. So how cool is that? So then we can, of course, select the frequency 
So if we have example low pass filter here, 12. If we take this frequency down, it does the same action as we would do it with the EQ like that. We are filtering the high frequencies and we're passing the low frequencies. Okay, so then we have a resonance and resonance means how much are we adding frequencies using our bands. Doing this equals as doing this, like lifting it up. Inside here, in the display, we have our envelope for the filter. So you can see here, you can see when I move these around, they also move over here. Basically what envelope always means, so these attack, decay, sustain and release. How is the filter working? How fast is the filter starting and how fast the filter going away? So all these controls are meaning that. We can work on the slope, we can select how if we work in a linear way, so you can see that it's a very like a more stiff control. Exponential, like this. We can also put a legato mode and free mode. When the legato mode is on, each note will trigger their own envelope. Then we have free. So this one, especially, this is bypassing. So making that it's taking away the decay phase. And this is especially good if you're doing percussive sounds. Okay, we also have the loop and this is the envelope loop. And if you're not really sure what all these are, well, to, to be honest, if you're not sure about anything <laughs> ever, then always go to the info view and it really shows really well here. So uh, filter and loop mode, ADR, attack and decay phases repeat until key releases. So it's just different ways that the envelope is reacting again when we are playing. We also have envelope velocity or most of the controllers have velocity controls. So this one has how much uh, effect the velocity has on the envelope and how the envelope is working. So so this will affect a lot, especially if you're live performing and it's a very good if you want more expression in your sound. Then we have drive and we have the different drive, uh, drive styles. So will it add symmetric distortion or asymmetric distortion and all of them have different qualities. So then we have, remember these modulation modes, uh, similar than here. So we have frequency modulation, of course. How is the filter frequencies? So this here modulated by LFO1. So example, we can add some here. We have our LFO one on, very big change. That's a really cool sound actually. Or how is the key that I press uh, modulating the frequency? So I'm pressing different keys. Okay, and I put the key up. Okay, then we have also envelope and how is the envelope? modulating the filter frequency. How much? Not at all. Okay, we have also resonance mode. So we have the LFO1 key and envelope. And you know how in the EQ8 we have the Q, which is here. So that is adjusting how much resonance are we adding. So this is a lot of resonance and this is quite narrow resonance. So the Q is how big is the um, the band, how wide is the band. So then this means how much is the LFO one modulating the Q again in four. Then we have the key, which is the same thing as before. How is the keys um, modulating the resonance, the Q of the filter? And then we have envelope again. How is the envelope modulating the resonance or the Q of the filter? Cool, so we have now gone through the filters and as I said, everything else works in the filter two exactly the same way. Okay, so we can now add that filter to ours. So, well, that goes to filter one, maybe this uh, F, uh, the noise would be 50-50, half on the filter two, half on the filter one. I could take the follow away and then go to filter here. We're keeping it quite retro. I'm gonna take the release quite retro. And then also the oscillator two should go to the filter two. So I'm gonna go all the way to the left. And then let's just have a look what happens here. Maybe linear. Add the asymmetric drive. 
activate LFO2 so that we can get... Oh. Some interesting sounds to our bass. And now we're going to go to the most important part. I think one of the most important part when we are sound designing, especially with instruments, is amp. So we have amp one, amp two, works exactly similarly that we have. So the amp one is oscillator one's amp, and then we have amp two that is oscillator two's amp. But again, we can route them slightly differently later on. So can you see that actually the options here are very similar? So we also have an envelope. It has exactly the same commands and it does as in filter. So we have a uh, linear, exponential, we have legato, free, all these same options. But the only difference is that we don't have drive, obviously, and where our um, modulation modes are slightly different. But the modulations are for panning. But the logic of behind these are exactly the same. How much is the LFO1 modulating the pan? Going left and right. So let's put that. How is the key affecting the pan? What more I go to the right in my keys, the more right it will go into in my headphones. Can you see that? Oh, then we go octave lower and it goes to the left. How is the envelope of the amp affecting the, the pan? So this is the amplifier's output level. How much is the LFO modulating uh, amplifier's um, level? So example, we could create very interesting side chaining type of effects with this. Example, put the LFO 1.4. Okay, we also have how is the key affecting the output level? It's getting louder, or we can go quieter. So if even if you want to create only using the oscillators and the amps, that's absolutely fine. But it will affect a lot on how the sound is working. So when you press the button, when you press the key, how is the sound starting? How is it going to like be formed? And how is it going to be ending? So example, if I want a lot of decay on this oscillator, I'm going to put the release very long. What if I want very more like shorter and punchier uh, sound? I might put the decay up and also release a little bit shorter. And then example, like I could uh, oscillate it too, activate the amp there. So now we have worked on both of those and I do like the level. So I might put, go and activate the, put a little bit of LFO2 into the output level of the oscillator 2 uh, amplifier. Because it's really cool. Not that much. So then we have the LFO and we already talked about that a little bit. So LFO is a low frequency oscillator. Now we can example change the rate of the LFO using Hertz. So rate of the frequency. So you can see the rate here in very nice visualization. Or we can go here and use a time signature. So example one four. We also have the wave. We can also go sine wave, which makes it sound slightly different. So if I go and add it to the amplifier, so uh, here of the air oscillator one. The width of it. And it will change how the oscillator sounds. Rectangle, now it's very wide. Okay, and then we have a retrig, which retrig. Retrig in English, but I always like saying it. Retrig, because it sounds Swedish. Each time a sound is played, it's always going to start from the same point of the face. So this is the face. So does it start from here or we can also put the face on offset. So you can see that this offset is changing the face of 
the signal. Then we have the delay. Is that how delayed is the uh, LFO is on the sound? So is it if we have like three seconds and it starts soon? There we go. So it was a delayed. We have also attack. How slow is it to start? So it doesn't start smoothly from the beginning. So it's slightly different than the delay because it's already started, but it's not as eff um, effective in the beginning. It kind of goes. <laughs> okay, so in the LFO2, it's obviously same stuff. <laughs> Okay, and then we have the global. First we have volume, then we have a vibrato. Okay, rate of the vibrato. I actually love using vibrato on a instruments and the unison. And that is basically how much do we want to add uh, like unison voices into it. And you can see in the display there's unison voices. We can add two or four. Retro. Or two. So it's slightly more subtle. And then detune of the unison. This can add a lot of color into the mix if you use the detune. You can also add the delay of the detune. So does it start the unison straight away or a little bit with delay, a bit like the uh, with the, um, the, 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 the LFO. So it kind of grows into that unison. Then we have glide. We also have a glide mode, constant, which will be a constant without any thought about intervals and proportional, which is about intervals and how it's going to go between the interval lengths. Legato mode, it will also only happen if the second note of the keys is played before the second one is ended. Otherwise, we have the quick routing and keyboard. So these are the last things. So we have quick routing and here you can see uh, O O O F F A A. What do they mean? They mean oscillator, oscillator, filter, filter, and amp, amp. So you can see here: oscillator, filter, amp, oscillator, filter, amp. So this is the routing of the instrument. Does it go that oscillator, f, uh, frequency, and amp? These, this first row works independently without these two, three here, or do we want example that oscillator two and oscillator one? go both into filter one and amp one. So these are quick routing. So then you don't need to go through here, all these little F1s and F2s and so on. You can just actually route everything automatically by just using this. They can just give you very different answers even if you designed your sound on a one routing. Like that's example pretty cool. I like that. Otherwise we have keyboard options. So these are to the whole global keyboard. Are we, what octave are we? So example, we can go octave higher, lower, very easy. We can just tune the actual keyboard. We can detune it. <laughs> we also have the pitch bend range. Uh, range. So this stretch is quite interesting. So this will mean that if we go positive values, it will uh, end up the higher notes are going to be tuned higher and lower notes are going to be tuned lower. And then doing the opposite, of course, so lower. Also, we have this uh, error here and error there. And basically that it will add some random tuning into our playing. We also have a priority. So are we high, low, last? And this is to do with the voices. So we can add polyphonic voices here. So how many uh, polyphonic vo voices can be played at once? So example 24. And priority is what uh, stops playing first, what stops playing last. Higher, higher notes get priority. So lower notes get cut first. And then other way around, lower notes are priority and high ones get cut first and then we can also put last which means that the most recent notes get 
priority. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to check out my whole series on all about Ableton Live devices. I have plenty and plenty and plenty of these similar type of videos on almost all Ableton Live instruments and effects. And if I'm missing one from this playlist, then please let me know and I want to make it. Please remember to subscribe and also check out my Patreon. Here are my Patreon family. So in Patreon, we have a uh, monthly masterclasses, weekly live streams. We I give feedback on certain tiers. There's a private Discord for just for my Patreon family. And it's such a lovely bunch of people. So if you really want like support and family and people to talk about all the geeky stuff in a very safe environment, then please check this out because they are all lovely and we have a lot of fun. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please come again and love you. Happy bass making. Bye, 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 bye.